वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर राजेश सिंह एंड दिस इज पार्ट फोर ऑफ द एक्सरसाइज फोर पॉइंट थ्री फ्रॉम द बुक पार्टन एंड शर्बत इन दिस वीडियो आई विल सॉल्व क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन टू थर्टीन फ्रॉम द एक्सरसाइज फोर पॉइंट थ्री सो लेट एस स्टार्ट विद क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन सो इन क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन वी आर गिवन दैट लिमिट x tends to c f x is equal to l where l is greater than zero and limit x tends to c g x is infinity. We have to show there is we have to show that limit x tends to c f x times g x is equal to infinity. So for this we will take any k greater than zero. So let k greater than zero be any real number. So we have to find to find delta greater than zero such that zero less than x minus c less than delta should imply f x g x greater than k. So for this, what we will do? We will use the fact that limit x tends to c f x is equal to l. So since limit x tends to c f x is equal to l. So for epsilon equal to l by two, there exists delta one greater than zero such that zero less than x minus c less than delta one implies f x minus l is less than l by two. So that is minus l by two is less than f x minus l. Is less than l by two, and this implies l by two is less than f x is less than three l by two. So mark this as a. So f x is greater than l by two. This inequality we are going to use further. Now, as limit x tends to c, g x is equal to infinity. So for above k greater than zero. There exists delta two greater than zero such that zero less than x minus c less than delta two implies g x is greater than two k by l. So mark this as b. Now let delta equal to minimum of Delta one, delta two. Then zero less than x minus c less than delta implies f x is greater than l by two and g x is greater than two k by l. So con that consider for for zero less than x minus c less than delta. This is our c. F x into g x. So f x g x is greater than l by two times g x using c, and this is greater than l by two times two k by l. So which is equal to k. Thus, zero less than x minus c less than delta implies f x g x is greater than k. Hence. Limit x tends to c f x g x is equal to infinity. So this completes the proof of question number eleven. Let us now move to question number twelve. So in question number twelve, first we have to find two functions f and g such that limit of both is infinite at infinity, but the limit of the difference is equal to zero at infinity. And then in the next part, we have to tell that whether we can find such functions with g x greater than zero such that limit x tends to infinity f by g is equal to zero. So let us first give the examples. So solution. So let f x equal to x. For all x belonging to zero to infinity, and g x equal to x for all so f x and g x I am taking it to be equal. Then 
hx which is equal to fx minus gx is 0 for all x belonging to 0 to infinity. So clearly limit x tends to infinity fx is infinity limit x tends to infinity gx is also infinity and limit x tends to infinity hx is 0 that will limit x tends to infinity f minus gx is 0 so this we have shown now we have to tell whether we can find such functions with gx greater than 0 says so that limit x tends to infinity f by g is equal to 0 so in this case you can see that fx by gx is 1 so limit x tends to infinity f by g is equal to 1 and which is not 0 so this example will not work in fact we will show that we cannot find such functions satisfying these two properties so in the so in the next part we are asked that whether we can find functions f and g on 0 to infinity with gx greater than 0 such that limit x tends to infinity f minus g is equal to 0 and limit x tends to infinity f by g is equal to 0 so answer to this question is no so we cannot find such functions so let us prove this so for this let h equal to f minus g then h by g is equal to f by g minus 1 so that is f by g is equal to h by g plus 1 so limit x tends to infinity fx by gx is equal to limit x tends to infinity hx by gx plus 1 now so we are assuming that limit x tends to infinity hx by gx so hx is 0 and 1 by gx is also 0 so this goes to 0 plus 1 this is equal to 1 so we are not we cannot find so any function which satisfies these two this property this property so for that limit x tends to infinity f by g must be equal to 1 hence we cannot find two such functions so which is not equal to 0 So you can say let h equal to a so let h equal to g where limit x tends to infinity f equal to infinity limit x tends to infinity g equal to infinity and limit x tends to infinity f minus g equal to 0 so with this condition limit x tends to infinity f by g will be equal to 1 which is not 0 so we can never find such function so this completes question number 12 now let us move to question number 13 so in question number 13 we are given that f and g are two functions so that limit x tends to infinity f is some finite number l and limit x tends to infinity g is equal to infinity we have to show that limit x tends to infinity f of g is equal to l so let us try to prove this so given limit x tends to infinity f is equal to l and limit x tends to infinity g is equal to infinity to show limit x tends to infinity f of g is equal to l so let epsilon greater than 0 be any real number so what we have to find to find k greater than 0 says that x greater than k implies f o g minus l is less than epsilon so this is what we have to show so for this we will use the fact that limit x tends to c infinity f is equal to l and limit x tends to infinity g is also equal to infinity 
Now since limit x tends to infinity f is equal to l so for above epsilon greater than 0 there exists k greater than 0 such that x greater than k implies fx minus l is less than epsilon so this is our a Again, as limit x tends to infinity, gx is equal to infinity. So, for k greater than 0, above k greater than 0, there exists m greater than 0, such that x greater than m implies gx is greater than k. Now, Consider for x greater than m, this is our b. So x greater than m implies gx is greater than k and this is from b. And gx greater than k implies f of gx minus l is less than epsilon. This is from a. So we are instead of x we are taking gx because x greater than k implies f of x minus l is less than epsilon in it so this that is f of gx minus l is less than epsilon hence x greater than m implies f of gx minus l is less than epsilon so we have thus limit x tends to infinity f of gx is equal to l so this completes question number 13 so now we have completed exercise 4.3 in my next video i will start with exercise 5.1 till then stay tuned and subscribe to our youtube channel for further updates thank you